Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at four, prescription drugs are one of the most important, if not the most important part of a person's health care regimen. But drugs are expensive and costs just seem to be going up. In 2023, it feels like everyone should be able to afford or have coverage for the treatments they need to stay healthy or alive. But that simply isn't the case. If you are like millions of Americans, you've probably found yourself in a situation where the cost of treatment was just too high. In fact, many people are forced to make an impossible choice every month. Do I skip filling that prescription because I need to buy groceries for my family instead? So why are drugs so expensive? Well, it depends a lot on, on a lot of things, including if it's a specialty drug, whether or not you have insurance coverage, or if any rebates or discounts are available from the manufacturer, or perhaps if you are being prescribed the generic or name brand of that drug. And when it comes to insulin, Americans are paying way more per vial than the rest of the world. In fact, quadruple the price of what people are being charged in Chile, the country with the second highest price tag for insulin according to the Rand Corporation. So this evening, there is some big news involving drug prices that will impact the thousands of Metro Detroiters who take insulin. Kimberly Gill joins us now live from the newsroom with a breakdown of what this means for local families. Kim. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Today, drug maker Eli Lilly's CEO announced it was capping the out-of-pocket cost of the life-saving drug at $35. So as of May 1st, Lilly is also reducing the list price of its non-branded insulin to $25 a vial. Right now, it's listed at $82 a vial. Eli Lilly's CEO, Dave Ricks, made the announcement today. This is a culmination of about seven years of work we've been doing to reduce uh, the price of our insulins, uh, launching our own a generic to our own uh, best-selling brand. But with the change last year in the Medicare Part D benefit, the senior benefit, to $35, we think that should be the new standard in America. And so while we uh, could wait for Congress to act or the healthcare system in general uh, to apply that standard, we're just applying it ourselves. Lilly's going to buy down all of our customers' out-of-pocket cost to $35 at the pharmacy counter automatically. Now, although insulin is relatively inexpensive to manufacture, the cost has been rising for years. The American Diabetes Association says the average price of insulin nearly tripled between 2002 and 2013. Demand has also increased as diabetes becomes the fastest growing chronic disease in the world. According to the CDC, 37 million adults in the U.S. are diabetic. For Eli Lilly, insulin, the new price cap, will automatically apply at most pharmacies with no additional action from the patient. Otherwise, a coupon will be available for patients to use at the remaining 15% or so pharmacies where the electronic system does not allow for the automatic price reduction. So Karen will have much more on this on later editions of Local 4 News. For now, we'll send it back to you in the studio. Affecting so many Metro Detroit oh, families. Oh, indeed. Yeah. yeah. All right. Thank you, Kim. Well, a plan to send $180 checks to all Michigan tax filers is not happening anymore, but the state Senate did pass a tax plan that could still spell some good news for residents. The key component of that bill increases the working families tax credit from 6% to 30%. According to Democrats, that means roughly 700,000 Michiganders will see an average of $3,100 back in their pockets. Retirement income taxes are also changing, giving all retirees the maximum deduction, and public employee pensions would not be taxed at all. For a closer look at all the changes, head to click on Detroit.com. Meantime, food stamp recipients are set to start receiving $90 less per month on average, and that's because three years now, People who got SNAP benefits received extra funds for food as part of the pandemic hunger relief program. Congress voted to end those pandemic emergency allotments, and they officially stopped that this month for nearly 1.3 million Michigan residents. Some big changes are coming to MSU's campus to boost security. Starting on March 13th, a new key card will now be required to access buildings on campus overnight. That's between 6 p.m. and 7.30 a.m. on weekdays. Some buildings will simply now be closed on the weekends. The school is also installing more cameras across campus. The news of security updates comes just more than two weeks after. 43-year-old gunman with no known ties to the university attacked the campus killing or injuring students and terrorizing the entire community. 
U.S. Marshals need your help this afternoon tracking down a man they say helped throw a 21 year old woman in the trunk of a car that was later set on fire in Washtenaw County back in November of 2022. 28 year old Bashid Bristol Davis is about six feet, four inches tall, weighs about 240 pounds. There is currently a $5,000 reward for information leading to his arrest. All new at four, the company that owns the Belleville toxic waste dump that agreed to take contaminated soil from Ohio has been cited for permit violations dozens of times in the past. A local four analysis of state data shows U.S. Ecology has been cited for per permit violations 39 times in the last 20 years. It's roughly twice a year since 2002. Lawmakers have promised to take a closer look at the company's facilities, including the well and landfill, where the contaminated soil and water were set to be sent. Time now for our first look at the forecast. It was a pretty nice afternoon out there, Kim. It was. We started out with that wintry mix that we expected, but that quickly moved out, leaving us with a, a more spring-like day this afternoon. 53 now at Metro Airport, 50 in at City Airport, 50 now in Pontiac. Still lagging behind, but not too bad. Mid-40s in Mount Clemens, 46 right now in Port Huron, also in Lapeer. 53 in Ann Arbor and also out in Howell. It is nine degrees warmer than it was at the same time yesterday in Pontiac. Six degrees warmer in Ann Arbor and seven degrees warmer at Metro Airport. Well, you've probably heard about this late week storm that we are tracking very carefully. The low still sort of in question, but here's what we know so far. We will have winds over 35 miles per hour. So if we get a period, even a brief period of freezing rain, uh, and also some snow, we could see more power outages. Then we also have a chance for rain, mainly from Metro South and then from uh, our Western and Northern zones, probably more in the way of snow. But I'll break it all down for you and we'll talk about it coming up in the forecast. Well, speaking of power outages, it's been seven days since that ice storm knocked out power to nearly one million Metro Detroiters. It's been a battle for work crews trying to get Michigan back on the grid, but the saga is not over for more than 12,000 residents who are still in the dark at this hour. Earlier this week, DTE Energy said they would be providing a $35 credit for customers who were without power for more than 96 hours. Meantime, the new time of day rates for DTE customers take effect today. So that means electricity will cost more between 3 and 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. That rate will go up even higher during the summer months. The new off-peak rate, which includes weekends, is also going up and will now cost residents roughly $15.50 a kilowatt. DTE hopes these rates will get customers to shift behavior and reduce energy usage at peak hours. A local school district has some serious bragging rights today after four of its high school dance teams all placed at a major national competition. Paula Tutman is at Eisenhower High School over in Shelby Township this afternoon, and this isn't just a huge deal. This is a mammoth deal, right? Absolutely it is. Okay, so take a gander with me. If you look in this gym, you go over here, you see these really cool banners of the men's basketball team, but walk with me. Look at this. Just turn around and you see really cool banners of the women's basketball team. Now, some of the female athletes will tell you that the boys teams, the fellas still get the real lion's share of the fan love. But when you get national attention for elite female athletes, well, it goes a long way to, you know, leveling the playing surface. And your national champions, Eisenhower High School. This season, that announcement was made numerous times for dance teams in the Utica School District. In third place, make some noise for Stevenson Ford. The nationals and dance competitions for all intent and purposes are as big as the Olympics. And this district had three teams representing all four high schools. Somewhere inside me, and I am down, but I'll get up again going against hundreds of different schools from all over the country. And all three teams have made it to the finals, have placed great in the nation, and it's really cool to represent Michigan schools. Universal Dance Association National Dance Team Championships, and here's how it fell. Eisenhower High School placed first in medium varsity hip hop and second in medium varsity jazz. Our program always preaches to put your blinders on. So that basically means just don't pay attention to other teams and just focus on us and ourselves. Everybody put up their hands. Obviously it was filled with a bunch of lifts, uh, turns, 
and just crazy jumps, and it took a lot of practice, but we definitely executed it very well. Stevenson Ford, United, placed third in small varsity palm. Utica High School. And Utica High School placed eighth in small medium palm. I stumbled a little bit at the end of our trick, but I knew it wouldn't matter because I danced like really hard after and I made up like our, as our team we made up for like the little oops. And for young female athletes it goes beyond bragging rights. Women in sports are not recognized as they should be. They aren't. Um, and that's apparent nationally, it's apparent even in this school and that like you can like even see like at like there's really no student section at a girls basketball game like there is at a boys basketball game. We do put in the work. We are athletes. We do go to workouts every week. We our practices are um, physically and mentally to like taxing. So um, just getting that recognition, especially as like a young woman, is very important. And I feel like we definitely are starting to get that recognition, which is very nice. Absolutely. And Karen, at the end of the day what she said. Oh my gosh, Back you're you. right. I love the recognition. What a great story. All right. Thank you, Paula. Appreciate it.